What is cracking big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE, Big Dogs Got E Fantasy Football. Happy Thursday. Getting close to the weekend. Want to throw out a slapper for y'all today. We're going to look over my rankings for redraft. So 2020 fantasy football straight up rankings. These are half PPR and these rankings are going to be for one quarterback leagues because the way we're going to do this today is I'm going to throw my rankings up on the screen and when you enter your rankings into fantasy pros it puts them next to both the ECR and the ADP. So the ADP is obviously average draft position. So it tells you plus or minus how far away you have a player rank compared to their average draft position. ECR is expert consensus ranking. Should be renamed FCR, fraud consensus ranking. So basically all the people that submit rankings via fantasy pros, right? All the guys in the industry, the ESPNs, the Yahoo's, the footballers, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll tell you how far off you have a guy ranked from where they have it. So if I were to do my super flex rankings inside of the fantasy pros for this, the numbers would be ridiculous because I'd be like plus 70 on most of the quarterbacks because you know super flex are obviously drafting guys third fourth round that go in like 11 12th round we're going to do more like skill player analysis today when it comes to the rankings and we'll see how differently I have some of the players rank compared to others in the industry and just the general public in terms of the ADP if y'all enjoy the video please hit the button that looks like this is right below the video it takes you two seconds and i truly genuinely appreciate it also subscribe to the channel if you are new to the channel i will be putting out videos like this 200 days a week helping you all prep for your 2020 fantasy football drafts with that being said tuck your shirt in stop yelling let's eat <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to throw my rankings up, bing, bang, boom, right now. And as you can see, I'm a fraud. There's actually only the top 40. If you want the top 50, there will be a link in the description down below. Completely free to get them. Just got to throw your email in there. Top 40 right here. Nothing too crazy on the top. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon, Ezekiel Elliott. I want to talk about the Christian McCaffrey versus Saquon Barkley. And if C-Mac hasn't been your one-on-one for the entirety of the offseason, you're probably a fucking alien at this point. But I think the more I do a little bit of research, the more argument there is to be made that Saquon, you know, it's not a hot take to say that you think Saquon's going to end up as the RB1. So stop fucking putting that out there and pretending you're, you're making a hot take there. Saquon is the best pure runner in the NFL, the most athletic running back in the NFL, especially respective to his size. The most explosive player, probably the most explosive player in the NFL. What makes us a little bit nervous about Saquon is the team situation. When I do my research, the only resources I tend to use are like tools, apps, and things that can give me data in which I can make my own conclusions. I sell my own draft guide. I usually don't waste time reading or taking in other people's draft guides unless they're giving me information that will take me far, far too long to actually consume and bring out to you guys myself. Now, y'all know I'm friends with Mr. Matt Kelly over there at Roto Underworld. They also have a draft guide that they're selling. This is what Matt calls the world famous draft kit. They do something different than we do in our draft guide. They actually go team by team and break down the actual situation of the team in terms of pass ratio, run ratio, what the new head coaches mean to these teams and player breakdowns with forecasting, you know, based on the actual team situation. That's probably one of the most important things to look at that I think most fantasy players under eight, like they love to look at talent. They love to look at things that are great, but don't paint the bigger picture. So if y'all use playerprofiler.com, which is one of the, if not the best resource in fantasy football right now, they do a draft kit every year. One of the things that they broke down in the draft kit was just the pure usage of running backs under Jason Garrett, right? Jason Garrett is coming over to New York to take over as the OC. Joe Judge is just a leader of men. He's just a, a guy who's going to get people pumped up. He's just going to talk like a robot and get you fired up to run fucking right through a wall. But Jason Garrett's going to be the one that's manipulating the offense. Anytime we have a Jason Garrett-led offense, it is accompanied by an absolute workhorse. The obvious example would be Ezekiel Elliott in Dallas. Before him, DeMarco Murray. Even when those guys were hurt, you're seeing him thrust players like Felix Jones, Darren McFadden into a workhorse role. As long as you look like a workhorse, Jason Garrett is going to feed you like a newborn baby's getting breastfed by his mother. 2020 is Saquon Barkley breastfeed syndrome season 
this was Matt Kelly's show, that would be the title of the podcast. Saquon Barkley breastfed, breastfeed, I forget what the fuck I said, but he'd write it down, that would be the title. Within their draft guide, there's just basically two main areas. There's the cheat sheet with all the players and the player analysis. And then there's the team breakdowns, which are extremely valuable. I used to do those in videos, but they take so much time because there's so much information to peel off from schemes to pass ratios to player tendencies to coaching tendencies and tell 12 personnel 11 personnel whatever this is all included in their draft guide which i put the stamp of approval on opposite my draft guide playerprofiler.com you'll see like in the main menu it says draft kit you literally just click on it and can grab it through there i think saquon just given jason garrett and his propensity to give his running backs no matter who it is 20 to 25 touches a game and given that saquon barkley is probably the best running back that he'll ever coach because saquon barkley will probably go down as one of the best running backs of all time this man's about to get 400 touches this year and there's a possibility that he passes up christian mccaffrey all that being said Chris McCaffrey, still 101. As we make our way down the list, you will see that the first eight players are all running backs, and this is dictated by the market. This is as if I was on the clock, who would I be picking at these spots? That's how my rankings work. I don't make projections. I don't sit there and stat out things because that is fucking absolutely pointless. You're never going to come close to actual stat projections. But when I'm doing my rankings, the way I do it is, okay, if I'm on the clock right now, these five guys are off the board. Who am I taking next? And Miles Sanders right there is that choice for me. I understand this is really, 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 really high. And a lot of you guys are going to hate this ranking, but he is my RB6, which makes him the overall RB6 player because I want running backs early and I want them often. This is 12 spots ahead of ECR. This is 15 spots ahead of ADP. So if you are blessed enough to get him in the second round, that is an absolute smash, steal, criminal behavior. Irresponsible of the other league mates. So what do I love about Miles Sanders? I mean, obviously... The rookie season was incredible. The guy ends up being the rookie with the most yards from scrimmage last year ahead of Josh Jacobs. He's going into a role now without Jordan Howard in a Philly offense that should be a lot better than last year, given the health of the offensive weapons there. You want to talk about running back by committee. There is nobody else to form a committee here. I mean, Boston Scott is there. Sure, he'll catch some passes, but we saw at the end of last year, the last three to four weeks, when Boston Scott finally got involved 12 weeks into the season, both of them were catching passes. It was literally Boston Scott getting six targets a game, Miles Sanders getting five targets a game. So the market is set on Miles Sanders absolutely exploding. I just don't see any competition here, man. I just think it's a very obvious pick that people are reaching in order to make not a good pick. And you look at what the Eagles have done over the last whatever x number of years in terms of drafting running backs early they don't do it it was LaShawn McCoy it was Brian Westbrook I think Miles Sanders actually might have been the third running back under the Howie Roseman era where they've actually drafted a running back within the first three rounds those are the only three guys the other two are pretty damn good and I'm expecting Miles Sanders to be pretty damn good so I have him ranked all the way up here again a lot of this is dictated by the fact that you need to be going running back early in those first two to three rounds you need to walk away with two running backs for the most part the third round running backs are terrible value so you kind of need to smash running back the first two rounds so you have Miles Sanders up there Josh Jacobs is right behind him Dalvin Cook is obviously moving down a little bit because of the holdout situation he has a little bit of an injury concern of of course Michael Thomas sitting there at nine Devontae Adams at 10 and to be honest with you guys like I don't know how many mock drafts you've done but I've done a lot of mock drafts I'll have a new one coming out on Saturday I think I'm going to do a mock draft every Saturday going forward I just hate my team. I hate my team when I end up taking a wide receiver in the first round. And sometimes even in the first two rounds, because you could still get the guys so late in the fifth, sixth, seventh round that yes, it might be worse value. And yes, Michael Thomas at nine or 10 might be great value. But again, I will echo this all fucking summer. Value doesn't win you championships. The best fantasy players win you championships regardless of when you draft them. So taking Michael Thomas now, you're missing out on a top running back. The way you got to look at it is like you take the top wide receiver, you miss out on the top running back. What is it easier to hit on? The next wide receiver that you take or the next running back that you take? It's always harder to hit on the running backs as you drop down the tiers. With wide receivers, the tiers are so elongated. And I was doing some research, actually. I found an interesting stat. I don't have off the top of my head. I remember I tweeted it out. Last year, there was 25 wide receivers that went for over a thousand receiving yards. I think it was 29 players altogether, including tight ends, pass catchers, and Christian McCaffrey. That was the most of all time in a single season. However, Michael Thomas was the only player to go over 1,400 receiving yards. They had the most ever go over a thousand, but nobody else besides Michael Thomas go over 1,400. And that was actually the fewest over, I believe, dating back to maybe over the last 10 years. We're seeing this middle ground of wide receivers who all have 
this nice floor, good upside, but they're deep as fuck. That's why we want to wait on wide receiver, even though straight up raw in a vacuum, obviously you want Michael Thomas over Austin Eckler or Kenyon Drake, but the way your team is built makes it much more positively correlated if you grab a running back early and wait on the wide receivers because Terry McLaurin is going to be better than Michael Thomas this year. Let's move down the list. Joe Mixon down at 11. Again, the holdout contract situation. I might be thinking about taking Mixon over Thomas and Adams there as well. And then you could see these running backs, Austin Eckler, Kenyon Drake, I have pretty much higher than ADP by almost double digits. So Austin Eckler's 10 above ECR, 10 of 11 above ADP. Again, I don't know that I feel great about Austin Eckler in LA with Tyrod Taylor under center. I don't think he'll catch as many passes without Phillip Rivers there, but I do think that he's good for 17, 18 touches a game. He has literally been one of the most efficient running backs year in and year out in terms of yards created, in terms of yards per reception and yards per touch. He's been like top five, his rookie year, his sophomore year, every year he's in the league, as long as he's getting enough touches, he is one of the most explosive. He is one of the most efficient, elusive backs in the NFL. He doesn't need workhorse type role to feed you back really, really good production. So I just want a solidified, really good running back on my team. And Austin Eckler is that. That's why I have him ranked so highly. If he doesn't finish as the RB8 or whatever I have him ranked up here, that wouldn't really surprise me. But if he finishes in a mold of like the RB12, he finishes as a borderline RB1, I will be very happy taking him at the early uh, early part of the second round. Right now, he's like late second, early third, according to ADP and ECR. The way you can also read this chart a little bit is if you look at ECR, you look at ADP. So ADP is basically the public. ECR is basically the people that are fucking doing research about fantasy all summer long. So if you see a discrepancy there, if you see a discrepancy between me and both of those, you know I'm fucking right and they're all wrong. If you see a discrepancy between ECR and ADP, that means the public is either higher or lower than the quote unquote experts. And that's probably where you could take advantage of that in some of your actual leagues, like target the guys where my rankings or ECR is closer to a higher number, right? And ADP is lower because the public, for some reason, hasn't been doing the research or hasn't caught up to maybe some of the newer reports that we have out there. And that's where you can kind of find a delta in a lot of your drafts. So the next up I have, that's a pretty big discrepancy is Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And I'll be honest, I'm going to be redoing all of my rankings this weekend, which will be available in my draft guide. Very easy to cop. You go over to monkey fight.com you deposit ten dollars on there using the promo code b d g e monkey fight.com use that they will give you twenty five dollars to play with because of my promo code if you play a game on there of two dollars or more you will get an email access from me for my draft guide within 24 hours so that will have the season-long draft guide the rookie dynasty draft guide as well as dr morse's full injury guide. it's the best value in fantasy football that is fact not opinion. And within that, obviously, you will have the big board, the top 200 rankings, as well as positional rankings for PPR standard, half PPR. Everything you need for fantasy football is included in my draft guide. So if you want the updated rankings, the reason I bring that up is because Clyde Edwards Hilaire, you could see I'm a lot higher ECR and ADP. After the draft, I'm gonna I'm gonna break down Clyde Edwards Hilaire in more depth in a video next week, I believe. But really just the gist of it is that where there's smoke, there's fire, guys. And if we're gonna drop all these rookie running backs, Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift. J.K. Dobbins, uh, I would say Cam Akers to an extent. If we're dropping all those guys to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth rounds because they're in a committee, the Chiefs are telling us that they're going to be in a committee with Damian Williams. Now, the reason I had him ranked so highly at first is because I thought using the first round draft capital plus the talent of Clyde Edwards Hilaire would immediately beat out Damian Williams. I listen to things that happen, guys. You got to change your perspective on some of these things. And that's what I did with Clyde Edwards Hilaire here. They're saying, I, we've, we're hearing report after report after report after report that Damian Williams is going to be very important very involved expecting him to take a step up this year expecting this to be a, a battle for the starting role Clyde Edwards Lair will have to earn a role on the team there's a point where you could say it's coach speak but when you just keep hearing it over and over and over and over again it's probably game plan because you look back to last summer and it was talking about Damian Williams being the starter and he would have been the starter we saw them talk about Damian Williams being the starter last year they would be doing the same thing with him this year so they clearly have a plan and a role for Clyde Edwards Lair here which is making me pull him back in the rankings a little bit because this is going to be a committee and I think dropping him to probably Probably the early third round is about the right right move for when I do my ranking update. Sorry, this chart is from probably like a week ago or so. The ADP has him 14 spots lower. So he is actually starting to go in the middle of the third round. I'm not even sure where they take this ADP from, to be honest with y'all. Maybe it's from the draft wizard on their website. I don't know. But Clyde Edwards Lair, if you do end up going with one of these wide receivers early, right, you go Michael Thomas and then you go Joe Mixon or something like that. And then you're in the third round and Clyde Edwards Lair is sitting there. That is something I'm willing to pull the trigger on. But where I had Clyde Edwards Lair in the beginning of the offseason, I had to adjust given the reports and given the stuff that we've pretty much heard. So as we bike trike down the list, 
we can flip over to the right side of the list where we have DJ Moore, way, 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 way higher than consensus, expert rankings, and ADP. He is currently like a third round pick, maybe even borderline fourth round pick. And he had 135 targets, I want to say, last year. He played 15 games, only technically because he left that last week with a concussion. So if you're taking 135 targets, pacing it out to 16 game pace in 14 games, taking out the 16 game, he's going over 150 targets. I love the addition of Joe Brady. I love the addition of Teddy Bridgewater. I think it's a fucking match made in heaven with DJ Moore. I think we are sleeping on DJ Moore. And after this year, he will be a household name. Same with the guy right behind him, Allen Robinson. As you can see, I've actually moved DeAndre Hopkins down past them too, which is uh, going to get people big mad on the internet. Internet, something I've been doing since 1992. DeAndre Hopkins, I am way lower. ECR has him at what, 12 overall? ADP has him at 11 overall. That's just fucking absurd. I'm not using my first round pick on DeAndre Hopkins moving over to this Arizona Cardinals offense, which showed that they want to go a lot more run heavy once Kenyon Drake got there. They were a team that adjusted. They were a team that pivoted away from their original game plan of throwing it 72 times a game. Their pace even came down dramatically, too. They weren't the same offense over the first half as they were over the second half. And I think that's the game plan that they want to go to going forward. I don't like not having an offseason together. I don't like not having not being able to learn. I mean, going from Bill O'Brien's offense of just run the ball up the middle every single play to Cliff Kingsbury's offense four wide receiver spread is like... It's, it's not even like mixing alcohol. You know, when you're at like parties and people are like, don't mix beer and liquor. It'll make you sicker. The dumb fucking shit. Just fucking give me it all. It's like switching from tequila to like heroin mid party. That's what Bill O'Brien to Cliff Kingsbury basically is. And I think it's going to be a little bit tricky for DeAndre Hopkins to get a hold of early on. I mean, he's a great player, of course. And I think the raw talent will obviously precede himself and get him to that 1150, 1200 yard mark, maybe seven touchdowns or something like that. But I think Allen Robinson and DJ Moore outscore him this year straight up. So that's why I have him ranked higher. Going down the list a little bit, uh, I talked about Mark Andrews in depth in last week's bust proof players. He was a guy who played on 40% of the snaps last year and still finished as the tight end three. 39th in terms of snap percentage played at the tight end position. He was 25th in terms of routes run. That number is going to shoot up. I know a lot of you guys commented about how the diabetes or whatever was the reason that he was playing off the field, that reason that he wasn't on the field much. But we talked to Dr. Morse earlier this week, I believe on Tuesday's video, and he said that should not have been a problem. He works with professional athletes and he understands understands the issues that they go through. So Mark Andrews being a diabetic was not the reason that he was off the field so much last year. Hayden Hurst is now gone. Their pass catching guy, their other pass catching guy at tight end, which opens up more play time for Mark Andrews. I expect that number to be closer to 60 to 75% of the snaps on offense. And that's going to be a monster year for Mark Andrews. So if you're missing out on the top two tight ends, I honestly don't really suggest grabbing any of these tight ends early. I probably wouldn't do it in the second or third round, but got to rank them somewhere, right? All right, let's keep moving down the list. Juju Smith-Schuster and Robert Woods. So Juju, I have at 29. I'm actually 12 spots ahead AEP. ECR is also exactly the same with me. So me, as well as the expert consensus rankings are in the exact same spot for Juju's 29th overall, mid third round pick. ADP has him all the way back mid to late fourth round pick. And that's what's going to happen with the general public's ADP. Just seeing last year's results and projecting that forward to this year. But when you dive in a little bit more, you start to get a lot more context behind Juju Smith-Schuster. You have Big Ben coming back. You have Juju basically playing the entire year banged up. And then you start to remember, especially as the offseason goes with the expert consensus rankings, you start to look at it from a dynasty perspective and you start to remember the first and second year and just how dominant Juju was and how young he was. The breakout age that he had both in college and in the NFL is an extremely impressive resume that a lot of people are going to write off that shouldn't be writing off because now he gets his quarter bike bike and Juju should be should be fine this year. And then you have Robert Woods, which is an interesting case because you see I have him at 30 overall. I think he's a phenomenal mid third round pick. The good part about it is you don't have to take Robert Woods anywhere near mid third round. These This is like a spot where you can get DJ Moore and Allen Robinson as your wide receiver one. And Robert Woods, as you could see, all the way to the right, his ADP is 26 spots lower. So he's going as 56 overall. You can literally get him in the fifth round. ECR only has him eight spots lower, which tells you, again, I'm a little bit closer to where the people who do a lot of research have Robert Woods as opposed to the ADP. The only concern I do have is, is this offense overall. And I wasn't really concerned about Goff until I started reading more in the player profile or world famous, I got you, Matt, draft kit, where they were talking about Jared Goff's decline in play and efficiency has pretty much rivaled 
Todd Gurley's over the last year or so. It's a little bit worrisome because we're really high on Robert Woods because we like the fact that they went to 12 personnel a lot more last year. And Robert Woods is a much better separator. He's a much better flanker wide receiver than Cooper Cup, who runs strictly pretty much from the slot. 90% of his success is from the slot. If they're going to run 12 personnel, that's going to push Cup outside and he's going to be less efficient. But do we need to start worrying about Jared Goff and this Los Angeles Rams offense overall? Tons of really, really, really good tidbits about the team makeup, about the overall scheme, about what kind of personnel we can expect in Roto World's draft kit. Again, playerprofiler.com. It's draft kit literally on the top menu. You cannot miss that shit. We'll move down the list a little bit to Lamar Jackson. As you can see, I have him ranked way, 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 way below both ECR and ADP. It's just the fact that I'm not using a second round pick on a quarterback. I will be diving. I'm going to do a video next week about polarizing players. So guys like Lamar Jackson, AJ Brown, like what should we be doing with those guys who form a lot of discussion within the community? And I started talking uh, a lot about Lamar Jackson. So stay tuned for that. But overall, it comes down to the fact that the ADP has him as a mid second round pick. I'm just not going to use that at the quarterback position. You have Aaron Jones, who I'm way, way, way lower on. I just don't. I don't like them bringing in A.J. Dillon. I don't like the fact that he played on 60% of the snaps last year. It's just not something I feel good about drafting him where ADP has him as the 15th overall pick, early second round pick. I think Jones is going to be a tough play week to week. We love the talent and we love what he did last year, but you kind of caught the lightning in the bottle and I don't think it's going to strike twice here. So he's going to be someone who gives you boomer bust games, but even more inconsistently than he did last year. Did they use A.J. Dillon a little bit more on the goal line? I know it would be fucking unwise because Aaron Jones is so good and so efficient down there but these are nfl coaches man they just like to bang the fucking rock with the big guys it's nothing we could do about it i think there's a lot of question marks and red flags and i think like at a third round pick aaron jones is okay but you're drafting him as what he did last year and we're not going to get that again this year dj tark terry mclaurin two of my favorite 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 wide receivers young up-and-coming wide receivers in the world terry mclaurin just had kelvin Harmon tear his acl and if you were not drafting terry mclaurin because you were scared of kelvin Harmon, you were a fucking idiot in the first place but now this only ensures the fact that terry mclaurin seen 135 minimum targets and he is a talented motherfucker running like a 4 3 5 40 he is robert woods encapsulated but with 4 3 5 speed this dude is going to be bringing in 60 yard touchdowns a few times a year as well as be the number one possession receiver on this redskins team we just need a tiny step up for Dwayne haskins man people still still want to grab these guys at value you can't do it as i said value don't win you championships the best players win you championships also love dj chark either of these guys are guys that i would absolutely love to grab as you can in the fifth or sixth round of drafts uh these are my ranked Rankings. Again, this is not exactly where I would draft these guys. These are how high I have them ranked. Just so you know, when the ADP does roll around, these are the guys you should be targeting first. And lastly, I have Odell Beckham down here, man. He's someone that I'm probably going to move up a little bit in my rankings. One side, on one side of it, maybe I'll include him in the polarizing video for next week. On one side of it, you have this Browns offense where they just did not click whatsoever last year. The chemistry between Baker and Odell Beckham was fucking non-existent. It was like a blind date between a fish and a fucking zebra. The chemistry was way better between Baker and Jarvis Landry. And now you have Kevin Stefanski coming in. So you have a bunch of years in a row where Odell Beckham either couldn't stay on the field, health is absolutely a concern for him, or just didn't produce at a high level. So we have multiple years of that. We have weird chemistry between Baker and Odell Beckham. We have them adding Austin Hooper. We have Kareem Hunt integrated into the offense as a pass catcher with Kevin Stefanski they're going to be a lot more run heavy on the flip side though I was listening to a podcast from PFF yesterday and they had Matt Harmon on as the guest and he's like you know the king of reception perception you want to talk about wide receivers you go to Matt Harmon he was talking about Odell Beckham and how Odell Beckham was like the premier wide receiver him and Antonio Brown had graded out as the best man separators you cannot cover Odell Beckham in press coverage his success rate versus press coverage man coverage any of those coverages was like 99th percentile as long as he's been in the league last year it dropped down severely. He said he's never seen a drop off in terms of the percentile of success against these coverages after Odell did it for like six straight years of being arguably the top guy in the NFL. So he is writing it up to that sports hernia surgery that he had. He said, there's no doubt in my mind that Odell played injured all of last year because he just wasn't the same same player. Are we getting to the age where maybe he's just losing some of that explosion? I don't know. Are the injuries starting to take a toll? You know, the sports hernia surgery, the broken ankle a few years ago. It's possible that, you know, the elite days of Odell Beckham that we wish were going to happen just aren't in his range of outcomes anymore but it's also possible that you know two years ago on a per game basis 2018 Odell was phenomenal but just couldn't stay on the field so I think if you're drafting Odell you are drafting it in hopes that 
everything kind of strikes right. Same thing with like Aaron Jones last year. You're, you're hoping to catch lightning in a bottle with Odell, but I don't think it's out of the range of outcomes. If he was genuinely hurt last year, he got the sports hernia surgery and he should be fine for this year. They're going to be a little bit better in terms of chemistry going into 2020. You know, Baker's going to have more time given the fact that they added two big pieces to their offensive line this offseason. Kevin Stefanski, I think, will bring a lot more efficiency to the offense. So like there are a lot of outs for Odell to do well. There are a lot of outs for Odell to do poorly. So I think I'll probably move him up in my rankings a little bit but I still might like these younger guys who I think are going to be better fits for their offense and can actually operate Terry and DJ Chark as the clear alphas. Like they're going to be the centered piece of their offense, not just like the alpha on the outside, but like they're going to be the guy with the game plan being put around them. Like DJ Chark's going to be the wide receiver one there and also probably be the best player on the field at any given time for Jacksonville. Same thing with Terry McLaurin. I can't I can't confidently say that Odell ends up with more targets than Jarvis Landry. I can't confidently say that Odell is even like the third best weapon in terms of volume this year because Nick Chubb's going to get hella fucking carries Kareem Hunt's gonna be really involved they bring in Austin Hooper so it's like you know at some point you have to just be like okay talent isn't everything when it comes to fantasy football all right I hope that was like a helpful quick run through the top 40 rankings for y'all again if you want to get the top 50 which will be revamped there will be a link down below completely free just throw your email in that form but if you want the entire top 200 big board that will be available in my draft guide go to monkeyknifefight.com use promo code bdge when you deposit ten dollars or more play a game on there of two dollars or more and then you will get an email with access to the guide from me within 24 hours of playing the game monkey knife fight bdge play a game email from your boy and again i suggest y'all head over to playerprofiler.com and check out their draft kit is a very 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 good resource depth and analysis and getting information that you won't find other places because other places have lazy ass people like me who will not dive that deep to go team by team it's just a crazy 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 amount of information so if y'all enjoyed hit that thumbs up button please subscribe to the channel if you're new we will be bye tomorrow fade the public peace